Ma'am GMA 7 for uh, today's uh, first question. Good morning po. Um, si Congressman Paolo Duterte po ay nag-file ng bill para po sa mandatory random drug testing every six months for all elected and appointed government officials. Uh, tapos meron din pong provision doon for voluntary drug testing for everyone running in elections. Ano pong masasabi niyo doon? Maybe we can start with Kong Migs as Vice Chair po of the Civil Service and Professional Regulation Committee. Parang wala akong choice. Ako talagang inuna mo, Tina, ha? Yes po, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, with any legislator naman, they're welcome to file bills, right? Uh, that they deem fit. But as a legislator, I hope um, lahat naman tayo, as legislators kami dito, alam naman namin yung mga rules na we file, not just to file, but the intent is good, and I hope the intent for this is good. There is a Supreme Court case already that deemed unconstitutional a mandatory uh, filing, uh, a mandatory test, drug testing, if it's going to be deemed included as one of the qualifications for um, an um, uh, uh, official, uh, a, candid a candidate, kasi yung constitution naman naglalagay nun. But sana po, no, madepensahan niya to, and maganda po yung intent niya, and to defend this, you have to be able to attend the committee hearing and not pass it on to someone else. So, if this is his bill, we respect it. It will go through the process. Um, sana lang na ma mapakita niya bakit niya ginagawa to and na it's not for any vindication of anything. It's not to single out someone because that will be um, unconstitutional. And sana this applies also sa local government units because as our friends in media know um, even in Davao City meron mga 37 I think that tested positive <laughs> sa drug test random drug test sa isang department so sana this applies to all hindi lang mag-single out. Ma'am, ah, sorry po. Idagdag ko lang po na specified kasi doon sa bill na including the president. So, I hope including din lahat ng mga local government at lahat. Again, kung gusto niya ang ganito yung bill, he's, he has every prerogative to write a bill, pass, pass a bill, uh, file a bill, and uh, go through the committee. And if he deems that fit na tama yung wordings, at madedepensa niya yun, sana lang po madepensa niya yun in the committee, in the floor, in front of everyone, and not pass it on to another congressman dahil bill niya po ito. So, you know, eh, we will follow the process. We respect um, his knowledge and his intent on this. Sana lang the intent is good para sa kabutihan ng taong bayan because we are legislators to file bills for the betterment of the Filipino people at hindi para mang asar or mang single out or use your position um, to do things na may personal um, aspect po. So yun, sana po, madepensa niya at magpakita po siya dito sa Kongreso. Yun lang po. To quickly just add on, um, I guess, tayo naman dito, no, our friends in the media, and us also working in politics, uh, are aware of the noises around. <clears throat> and to specifically, just to answer also directly what uh, Tina said, uh, to include specifically a position might also infer that uh, there might be, you know, as much as I hate to say it, um, sana naman walang, walang personal uh, agenda. No, yung mga fina-file natin ng mga bills. In fact, um, what we do here in the House is we always look at the Filipino people. No? If the intent is for the Filipino people, we welcome them to file any kind of bill. And of course, it will go through the, the processes of you know, committee hearings, public hearings, and we will go through the process so that we can also make the best version out of the bills that are being filed. Pero yun nga, um, we hope na lang to see that there should be less uh, amounts of personal agendas in the filing of bills and more towards the 
uh, the vision of a better country, a better uh, better place for a fi for the Filipino people, and um, and also you know just to protect them everyone. You no, know? um, so again, uh, we would call on the wisdom of you know the, uh, we've had already as what Congresswoman Miggs mentioned. Uh, we've also there are also uh, there is also a Supreme Court case a uh, Supreme Court case Nevin, and uh, it was also deemed unco uh, unconstitutional. There were files uh, there were bills filed previously in the previous Congresses also targeting or at least well um, including local government officials that uh, didn't really go through because uh, of the Supreme Court here uh, case. So again, we would leave this to the wisdom. Of all the all the agencies, players involved, but uh, we can get also at least a clear picture on how this should go. So you know. Um, I guess na sabi naman po lahat. Just but just a quick uh, comment on my part. On its face, mukang uh, maganda naman po yung batas. We haven't had the uh, time yet to read specifically kung ano po yung nandon. But I think that's the challenge po talaga sa mga nag-aral po ng batas. Alam po natin na uh, yun nga na bangit ni Congresswoman Nograles na meron pong Supreme Court case already that tackled this and actually it was uh, deemed unconstitutional to include drug test as a um, as a mandatory step or it as qualification of candidates. So we would be very much interested po siguro to see ano pa talaga yung laman ng batas na ito. In what words was it couched? Would it be able to pass that constitutional um, barrier from pre uh, previous iterations? And I think yun po yung talagang uh, mahirap po dito. Madali lang po mag-file ng panukalang batas. Madali maglagay ng magandang explanatory note na clickbait or catchy. Pero it really comes down to the quality of the legislation. And I think we're excited, hopefully, to see our esteemed colleague na mag-attend po sa hearings and defend this bill. And we'd like to see his opinions po kung paano po ito magpapasa sa committee. And uh, we're excited to tackle it naman po. Yun po. Um, again, lilinawin namin, no? para sa amin dito, magandang magandang maganda yung intensyon ni Congressman Paolo Duterte. Having said that, mas excited po kami na makasama siya sa committee hearings. Pag pinatawag na to ng, ng tamang komite, excited po kami makasama siya. Maging malinaw po tayo doon. Maraming salamat po. Vivian Gulia from uh, Channel 2. Uh, yes, good morning. Follow up lang po. Um, what can we say about the timing of the filing nitong uh, panukalang batas na ito um, after nang mag-resign from the Marcos Jr. Cabinet, yung kapatid ni uh, Representative Duterte? And um, what about, I'm um, curious lang din ako kung saan kayo nanggagaling when you were parang um, asserting na dapat ay para mag-attend to uh, defend the bill si yung author nitong um, panukalang batas and meron po bang rights na mava-violate kung ma papasa po itong panukalang batas na ito well wag natin pangunahan kung anong rights mava-violate because the committee still has to hear on this no um, sa amin lang on the timing it's within his right to file anyone's right to file with regardless of what had happened externally. Kasi every congressman, as part of their job, is really supposed to be filing bills that they think would be good for their constituents or the country. So, uh, wag natin lagyan po siguro ng um, connection ang mga bagay-bagay. That's, um, that's an unfair insinuation. And um, let's, let's listen to the committee, in any committee hearing, for any congressman, if you are the uh, author of a bill, you really do have to show up and defend your bill and explain why you're, you want that bill to pass to the committee for the committee members to pass it and then later on in plenary for the majority, at least majority of the House members to support your bill. So, kailangan talagang pumasok, pumunta doon at it depends sa ang bill to the best way that uh, a legislator can. Siguro yun lang po. Um, siguro in addition, and it's not saying much in addition po siguro. Um, tama po yung sabi ni Kong Nograles, uh, we feel po siguro that it is not 
personally for this representation. Hindi po siguro lugar namin na mag-speculate. Just to make it clear on its face, yung pagbabasa uh, namin. Very briefly though, pero pasa based on our reading, uh, my reading of the explanatory note and the bill itself, I wouldn't want to speculate as to the timing or if there are any other intentions. Kasi klaro man, wala nang nabanggit doon other than uh, for the exigency of, exigency of the service. But with that said po, siguro, uh, as mentioned, yung pag-attend po, the second part of the question po, ma'am, sorry, can we, ano po yung... Ah, the, regarding the rights to violate, um, siguro po, we won't be able to say right away kung ano po talaga ito. We'd like to really thresh this out in the committee. Pero what stands for us, at least sa amin po with the background yung sa batas, what really comes to mind when you talk about drug tests and candidates is it was struck down as unconstitutional sa Supreme Court. As much as the intention may be good and as much as we would like to have this kind of uh, measure to ensure that our public servants are of uh, tip-top shape and of sound mind, um, ang maintain po talaga ng Supreme Court ay bawal po ito. So, yun nga po, that's why we really are looking forward to seeing him defend it. Ano po kaya yung wording nito? If it would be able to pass whatever constitutional test was imposed by the Supreme Court, these are the things that we want to see. We don't want to look into the timing or intention or, or speculate when there is nothing there. But we'd like to see. Let's uh, walk the talk and uh, work out the legislation po itself. Yun na po. Are there any additional related uh, questions before we move to next topic? Related? Okay. Uh, Red Mendoza from um, Manila Times. Good morning po. Of course, um, of course, this is related. Ano, uh, yun nga, yung file na, yung bill na final nga ni Congressman Duterte nga is related nga doon sa sinasabing pasabog daw nung sinasabing former lover ni ni Congressman Torrendo, si Cathy Binag, na sinasabi nga na nagdadrugs nga raw yung si BBM. And dinamay na rin, pati yung anak, yung first family na rin. So, I mean, of course, when you say the timing is not suspect, pero it's still suspect pa rin po. What is your take on this? You know, I, I think we answered this already, di ba? Kung, kung sino nagsalita, whoever talks, tingnan nyo muna kung credible ang nagsasalita. Look at the background. If um, credible ang mga sinasabi ng isang tao. But also, your questions are unfair to say ang timing. Kung totoong magaling kang legislator, alam mo yung trabaho mo, you will not file a bill and waste the resources of Congress and time to go after one person for personal reasons. Huwag ka na lang siguro mag-congressman kung yan lang po yung gagawin nyo. Kasi hindi yan ang trabaho ng isang congressman. So, with the timing and all, we cannot, we cannot speak for him why he filed that. And I'm sure the good congressman has good intentions for that, regardless of the timing. Sana lang po, no? Tingnan natin sa committee, tingnan natin how he will defend it, and make sure this is not going to be unconstitutional, and this applies to everyone. All officials, all candidates, all local government, lahat. Hindi lang isang tao. Kasi kung isang tao lang naman yung gusto mo, you don't need to file a bill siguro. Don't waste the resources of Congress and our time. I hope that answers your question. Just to add quickly now, um, we, we, get, we get the line of questioning. And um, you know, professionally speaking, in the standpoint of a legislator, we are trained to look in the, uh, at the best interests of the Filipino people, regardless of what's happening to us, what's happening to the world. Our interest is in the Filipino people and the Philippines in general. So to preface a question with the timing of it all, I agree with Congresswoman Nograles when she says that, first, look at the source. Credible ba? There were many debunked. Uh, it was already debunked. The issue was already debunked way back. So, sa atin naman, to try to prod that even further might incite or might also bring about unnecessary comments that may distract us already from, from the job that we're trying to do. So, sa atin naman, again, as a legislator, all of us are trained to look at the interests of the Filipino people, regardless of timing. So, um, I just wanted to make that clear. 
Kasi kami, ginagawa lang namin yung trabaho namin. We are being paid by the government's money, which means that also our, our mandate, our direction has to be also for the good of the Filipino people, the taxpayers' money. Diba? So, um, we hope na lang that uh, while this is a hot topic for the media, we hope that uh, the words that we share regarding this topic are also, um, also hold water. And, um, you know, Kasi once napapatulan natin ito, dadami at dadami din yan eh. Di ba? So, ayun lang. Iwas lang, sa, iwas lang tayo sa ganun ng mga klase. And let's focus on what is important. Thank you. Okay, so, Red. Siguro in addition lang. Sige, Sam, go ahead, sir. Sorry. Um, in agreement po, siguro what they uh, mentioned. Thank you again, uh, Sir Red, for the non-controversial question. <laughs> but uh, siguro po, I think if I'm understanding the question correctly, uh, I think it would be unfair to insinuate any uh, other intentions sa timing po ni Congressman Polong. As I mentioned, on the face of the bill, on the explanatory note, wala naman pong siyang masamang nasabi. And for all you know, the timing might be related to the finding of 37 positive uh, drug cases in the City Hall of Davao. Do you recall, this happened sometime in May 2024, recess po yan, and we recently just resumed. Uh, Congress, so baka yun po yung timing na sinasabi. Maybe he sees a drug problem in Davao that has to be remedied and he wants to replicate it nationwide. So I don't know if uh, it would be correct and I don't think it would be fair to intimate or to uh, suggest na the timing is related to yung vlogger uh, pasabog as you mentioned po. But uh, with that said, yun lang po siguro yung masasabi ko ito. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Elson Gismoria from Manila Bulletin. <clears throat> Hello po, just to clarify something. Anyway, good morning. Um, Kong Pami said excited po siya na makita si Kong Polong to participate. Uh, what does this mean? Hindi niyo po ba siya nakikita na umatin sa mga hearing? And uh, even kung nagsalita siya or hindi, have you seen him around dito sa house, dito sa plenary, during sessions? Uh, just curious po. Sa lahat po, sa lahat po. Ah, sa lahat ba? Hindi, <laughs> excited talaga ako kasi um, siguro hindi ko siya nakakasabay lang sa mga hearing. Um, posibleng iba yung mga committee na kinabibilangan ko at kinabibilangan niya. Kaya excited naman po ako na, na pag tinalakay itong bill na to ay makasama naman siya. Uh, ako, siguro babalik ko yung tanong sa inyo. Nakita niyo na ba? Tumatawa kayo. Sa, sa live stream lang po kasi yung mother. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> have you seen him around? Just your personal, ano po? If you've seen, your, personally, if you've seen him around I, I, lately. Personally, I, I haven't seen him here nor in Davao. So, kayo tatanungin ko, nakita niyo na ba? Kayo, sa Davao? Pati sa Davao, hindi ko nakikita. Gusto ko nga sana eh. Okay. How about in plenary po? Plenary. <laughs> if you look around po sa plenary, have you seen him there? Oh, uh, we, our seats are relatively close. I've oh. seen him once, a few months ago. Like last year? <laughs> a few months ago. A few months I've seen him once. That was na, I shook hands with him then. A few months ago. <laughs> once. Uh, we're off record, off record. I'm from Davao Oriental and I have to pass through Davao then on the way home. Um, ako, I cannot really say, pero yung mga, yung mga tao doon naman sa Davao Airport, uh, nakakausap ko naman nun doon. And usually, they see me more. You know, <laughs> they see Congresswoman Migs a lot, they see me a lot, but I cannot speak for the rest. No? Pero yun nga, just to stick to your question, I've seen him once and shook